I need you to read the book and tell me what you think. Now, there's some guys at the door who might be interested in this book who are hiding behind the door. <laughs> the next book I'm writing is about these guys. <laughs> and it's called Stout Men, because we are. So we went to Tibet, we went to the Amazon, we went down the Mason River. And this excerpt is, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm writing in the, the I'm writing about myself in the third person in this book. So if you see Papa Smurf anywhere, that, that's going to be me. Um, and this is a, a little excerpt of how Papa Smurf took two Chinese prostitutes out for dinner in the middle of Tibet. I know I have your attention. <laughs> Somehow, perversely, Papa had worked up an appetite. And while the rest of us, after being cramped in the dustmobiles all day, wandered the town to stretch our legs, he went off to pursue an eatery he had read about in a guide and a dish it had raved about. He would find all three. Down on named alleys, turning left, then right, then right again, through a hole in the wall, ten paces down, and left through a doorway. He found an unmarked restaurant with three empty tables. The chef owner wasn't surprised, as surprised as Papa thought he should have been. Zhuang Fu Kanti, Papa asked. Is this the Jung Fu restaurant? She, he answered. Yep. Yoshi and Kisi, Papa asked. Fish tasting eggplant. She, he nodded. The narrow squint opened the cosmic crack. Lai Ba, he said, bring it on. On Vancouver Island, Papa could get Cantonese food. In Beijing, he had bought a hamburger, but there, in Shigatsi, in the Tibetan site of the largest statue of the Maitreya Buddha, Papa Smurf had just ordered a Sichuan delicacy from the Chinese site of the largest statue of Mao Zedong. Not because of his vast knowledge of secret Himalayan provisioning, but because he just liked to eat well. The chef traded his brief interaction with Papa for a gigantic blackened walk. His cleaver and ring and spatula began reflecting flames, wars, trading, and a bunch of good and a bunch of bad. Peanut oil soared into the wok, followed by Asian eggplant, dubanjiang chili bean paste, ground Sichuan pepper, pickled chilies, and fermented fava beans. The wok bubbled warm and lustrous. In went chicken stock and soy sauce and Chinese black vinegar and Chinese rice wine and a hint of sour umami. Minced garlic cloves and ginger root added deep intensity and sugar and cornstarch brought sweet, harmonic balance to all the other luxurious layers of flavor. A sprinkling of thinly sliced scallions flew onto the dish halfway to the table. It was gorgeous. Yoshian Kinsey, said the chef, fish fragrant eggplant. As if on cue, two Chinese girls came through the doorway and landed on the empty folding chairs at Papa's table. Their broad smiles were dressed in red with matching high heels and lipstick and black choker necklaces, almost identical but for the length of their hair. Papa held up three fingers. Every harlot was a virgin once. The chef brought two more of everything, porcelain bowls and spoons, chopsticks, napkins. The scarlet women dug into the big dish. They shan't hang shit, me, asked the chef. What do you want to drink? Biju, the girls squeaked and giggled in unison. The chef brought three cold glass of beers. The girls tried a few more words of Mandarin, but Papa had either run out of vocabulary or was otherwise distracted. He ate as slowly as they wolfed down quickly before anyone could change their minds. Chopsticks down, they motioned to Papa, their fingers in their red mouths. It wasn't clear whether they were asking him for a smoke or suggesting a fire. Papa, still savoring, shook his head no to both, and the courtesans made their ex exit. She she, they called from the doorway. She she, thank you. Back at the fruit hotel, we asked Papa about his meal. He told us about the fish tasting dish with no fish and the Chinese hookers he shared it with. They didn't charge anything for blowing my budget, he said. It was outstanding. <laughs> uh, there are other excerpts I could read. So, um, if you think you're going to enjoy this book, you can get it one of several ways. You can take it out of the library because some third party sold 10 books to the VIRL while I wasn't looking. I don't know how they got them. You can buy it on eBay in Australia. I found this 
for fifty dollars and seventy-five cents, and they'll cover the ship shipping. That's Australian. We're supposed to go forty-seven bucks, or for a limited time only. <laughs> you can get it here tonight for twenty-five, and I also have for those of you that didn't come May the ninth. Uh, some Westwood Lake Chronicles. If you buy two, I'll sell them for 45. <laughs> Somehow I like this job better than the last one. <laughs> and that's it. I'll take questions. Uh, 